Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Minds and Money. With me here is now Fission, Fission 3.0 and the COO and director, Ross McElroy, who is also an exceptional uranium uh, geologist. Uh, yeah wants to give us an update in inside in the company. Ross, good morning. Uh, good morning, Jürgen. <laughs> hey, great to see you a long time ago. It was last time I think we saw us at PDAC in Toronto. Right. So now we are in London as uh, the mining gang is traveling, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, here we are, near the end of the year now. Yeah, exactly. So that's a good almost uh, eight months. Um, maybe you can give us a short uh, heads up what happened in the eight months. Sure. Well, we've been actually quite busy in Fission 3.0 in this last year. Mm -hmm. um, we tackled a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, different projects. I think when we were talking at the PDAC, we were moving over to the Key Lake area in mm -hmm. the southwest side of the mm -hmm. basin. So we have staked a big land position down there, um, just south of the old Key Lake mine and the, the whole infrastructure, the operating mill. Mm -hmm. um, we did a little bit of drilling there, and I think we probably reported on that back when we when we last talked. But it was encouraging. We saw yeah. some nice alterations, some good Whoops. uranium yep. uh, kicks. So mm -hmm. um, you know, we we're that, that looked good. But I think that the next move is what I think was a significant uh, project, and that was in Cree Lake and uh, up in the northeast side of the basin. Mm -hmm. We, we drilled two holes there. Uh, it's just, uh, we were expecting to hit the basement fairly shallow, and it was about 200 meters deeper than where we, we, we expected. Mm -hmm. And what that meant is there's some significant structural offset uh, going on, and these are the, the, the setting that actually creates uranium deposits. Uh -huh. so, so that's positive. We, uh, very, very positive. Yeah. Um, so the, uh, we saw big faulting, uh, lots of alteration, and graphite into, this, into the sandstone. Pathfinder elements, boron and uranium were all very elevated. This is a first-rate drill target and something that uh, we plan to get back to, you know, hopefully in, in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, drill around that area. So it's something Fantastic. that we're really quite excited at Cree Bay. Super. Can you give us maybe some ideas about grades? Because if I remind this correct, you had like, what, 13% uh, use Rio 8, right? Yeah. And there was also gold associated on some of your drill results I saw, right? And that was on a project called uh, Beaver River. Yeah. So that's over in, in the... Um, in the Beaver Lodge Uranium City area, so more in the northwest side of the basin. And you're right, so our prospecting, you know, back in uh, August, September, uh, really uncovered a new zone. In fact, we call it the trigger zone now. And this is something <laughs> that, um, it was sort of right near the edge of our, uh, of our claims. Mm -hmm. uh, and we saw the high grade uranium, as mm -hmm. you said, 13, uh, really nice associated high grade gold. And so we staked a lot more ground around it. So it was, there was some open territory in there. So we've protected that, that showing quite well. We have a nice land package now around there mm -hmm. and something that we're very eager to follow up on. When you see numbers like that in outcrop, high grade uranium, high grade gold, uh, no overburden. It's basically surface exposure. It's something that mm -hmm. we you know, we get quite excited yeah, about fantastic. We want to get back to it. If somebody's not so deep, let's say, into uh, exploration of uranium associated with gold, is that a problem to get the gold out? Is that a problem that, let's say, the gold is more shiny than it should be? No, <laughs> it, no it really uh, it separates out very easily. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at the Clough Lake operation, it was an operating uranium mine. Um, they, they took out, I think it was something like 60,000 ounces of gold out, out mm -hmm. of the out of the mine, so really no problem, and sold that gold. So, you know, it, so it doesn't not, tie in not with radioactive, it. It's of not course, radioactive yeah. gold yeah, at all. Yeah. It separates out quite easily, yeah. and uh, and we would expect the same things. Yeah. yeah, fantastic, great. So, what's the workflow for 2020? What do you guys want to do? Well, I want to get back. So now that we've established the that first rate drill target at Cree Bay, obviously that's something that we're you know keen to get after do some more drilling in that area and also following up on the on the Beaver River results of the high grade uranium. So I would say that um, those two projects really showed them the, the best uh, potential from mm -hmm. from all the work that we did in 19 and so they they absolutely require uh, the next the next phase which is drilling and that's mm -hmm. what hopefully we'll be able to do in 2020. Okay, fantastic. So lots of work in front of you. and I mean, you are an elephant territory anyway. Yeah? We are. So this is uh, really outstanding, and I'm, I'm sure you will get some good results out of that. Um, question, as you are 
in the exploration uranium business, I would call it. How do you see these days the exploration uranium sector overall? I mean, we have this petition 232 going on. We see uranium move the last, yeah, let's call it two weeks by 10% at least in price, which is a, a nice sign, but it does not help. Yeah? yeah. I mean, the most new mines built need at least 50, 60, maybe 70 dollars. Yeah. So um, what is your feeling on the, let's say, exploration sector for uranium overall? And uh, maybe you can comment a bit on the market. Well, I think, uh, you know, exploration is certainly a forward-looking part of the cycle. You know, you um, it, it really doesn't depend on the price. It does for mm -hmm. perception, mm -hmm. obviously. Uh, but, but really, I think it's a leading indicator. And I think that the fact that we're starting to see the price of uranium actually move its way up, as you've already noted in the last few weeks, it's been, mm -hmm. it's going the right direction. Yeah. You know, so hopefully that means that, you know, this is the right time to be exploring because you want to make those discoveries so that you're actually hitting the ground running with a really good project, mm -hmm. something that, that you can build up in the time when, you know, the uranium's in the right cycle. So, yeah. you know, sometimes you can get a little bit early, but I think now that we're starting to see the price of uranium, uh, you know, firm up and start going the right way, I think that exploration is probably where you, if you're not already into it, you certainly want to be ready to start exploring mm -hmm. those projects. So Yeah, absolutely. You know. So how, how long are permitting times for such projects? Well... Normally. No, I mean, you cannot say definitely, but yeah. give us an idea. Sure. I, you know, it's always from discovery at the early end to, um, to making a mine is at the minimum a 10-year cycle. Yeah. It's 10 to 15 years to go from, mm. you know, a discovery through to uh, the, the ultimate mining, we'll say. Um, the permitting part itself is probably the last five uh, five years of, uh, yeah. of the, you know, from yeah. building the project up, showing the economic potential, mm. permitting. It's it's quite a long cycle, so you know you, uh, you know that's why I say you can't be too early in the exploration game. You got to yeah. have these projects up and running. Exactly. Um, yeah. You know the the need for uranium yeah. is always increasing. That's yeah. right. So that means to me, like, I mean, we cannot push a button and then we have more uranium supply. That's impossible for sure, as it is with any other metal. But I, I could imagine uranium even takes a tick longer than, let's say, a copper mine, for example. Yeah, because there's maybe environmentally some more um, yeah, issues which have to be taken care of. So to me, the point is shrinking supply, still growing demand. It's, it looks like a perfect storm. Yeah, it, it, well, it could well be. I mean, I, I always feel that we're in the, the perfect storm right now. If mm. you're exploring for a project uh, due to the lead times that you say, um, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. These things don't happen yeah. overnight. You have to have your projects already in the hopper in the, uh, to be able to feed it. You can't push yeah. a button and have it turn right. on. It doesn't well, work that way. So you guys do something here right, I would say. That's right. Super. Huh? Ross, thank you very much. Always a pleasure talking to you. Always. And uh, we look forward to some uh, yeah, good results the next year. Very good, thank Super. you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Ross McElroy, the um, director and uh, COO of uh, Fission Uranium 3.0. And uh, yeah, you heard it, companies in elephant territory, definitely fantastic values in uranium, but also in gold they found. And uh, the drills are turning again next year, and we look forward to some good results. So thanks for watching us. Check out the company. Bye-bye from London.